If you've seen any of Sam Calder's travel videos, you know that they have epic transitions in them. Today, we'll be creating a wipe transition, which can be found in his videos as well as many others in HitFilm Express 2017. Today's tutorial will be rated 3 stars out of 5 on the difficulty scale. So just quickly before we begin today's tutorial, I just want to say thank you for 10,000 subscribers. It's a lot of people and I never thought we'd reach a milestone near 10,000. So thank you everyone who has subscribed and thank you to everyone who watches my videos. With all of that being said, it's time to get on to the tutorial. So before we edit, we need to talk about how we shoot the footage. When you shoot the footage, you need to make sure that an object passes through the frame completely. It needs to fill the frame, and it needs to pass completely from one side to the other. Otherwise, this just won't work. It can be a car, it can be a person, whatever it is, it needs to pass the frame. Once you've shot your footage, it's now time to edit it inside of HitFilm. I've got my clip inside the editor here. This is the first clip with the car coming in front of the camera. So, we're just going to make a composite shot out of this clip. Select it and just hit this button to make a composite shot out of it, and just hit OK. I'm just going to go into the compositing workspace very quickly so that we have a bigger viewer and a nicer area to work with. I'm just going to play forward in the video until we come to the point where the car that I want crosses the frame, which is here. You can use the comma and full stop keys on your keyboard to go forward and backwards one frame just to see how it plays back frame by frame. The idea is that the new video will appear from behind the car in this area. So to make sure that only the car is visible in frames like these, we have to create something that is called a mask. A mask is essentially a selection of your layer that tells the layer which bits should be visible and which bits shouldn't. Later we're going to be animating this mask, essentially manually cutting out objects from our video. This is a technique called rotoscoping, which I covered in a previous video, but I will show in this video as well. So to start off with your mask, you can use one of these three tools down here. A rectangular mask, an elliptical mask, and a freehand mask, which is better for complex shapes like this. So to start your mask, I'm just going to zoom out with the scroll wheel so that we can see outside of the frame of the video as well. Just select your clip, select the freehand mask tool, or whatever mask tool you're using, and if you're using those tools, then you can just drag to create your shape. Or with the freehand mask tool, just click to create your first point. I might actually undo this using Command Z on my keyboard and get rid of that mask. And I might extend it all the way out here. That's because I know I'll be moving this mask later anyway. Then you can just click to add points and you can outline the shape of whatever it is that's crossing your frame. I'm going to extend this one out. Once you're done, you can just go back to the original point and it will create your mask for you. Now you can see that only the car is visible. Now it's time for animating this mask. Once you've got your mask down, you can keyframe elements of it such as its position or its actual path, its shape. In shots like this where you just have a car which doesn't actually change shape during the shot, and doesn't change direction or move around much, then you probably only need to keyframe the position. However, if you have something like a person walking in front of the frame and they move their arms or their body, then you might want to keyframe the path as well. Nevertheless, to keyframe either the path or the normal position, just open up the mask properties, open up the transform, and you'll see the path and the position. The circles next to these properties indicate that we can keyframe them. I'm just going to click on the position circle to enable position keyframing and set a keyframe at this point in time, which is visible if we open up the mask transform down here, we can see that keyframe here. I'm going to animate by just going forward one frame and adjusting the position of the mask just by dragging on the value. You'll notice that it's created the keyframe down here, and when we go back a frame, the original mask position from that frame still holds. If you want to keyframe the path, you can do that too. I'm just going to set a keyframe for that first frame, and then here I might adjust it, and you'll notice that the path remains the same on this frame. All you have to do is keep going through all the frames in your video, adjusting the position and the shape of your path. I'll continue doing mine, and I'll get back to you when I'm done. Well, 
Alright, so we have finished the rotoscoping. I'm just going to go back, and when we play back the video, you'll notice that it disappears along outside the car. However, you'll notice it looks quite fake, because the edges are quite sharp. To fix this, there are a number of mask shape properties that we can adjust. So I open up the shape properties, and you can adjust a couple of things. First of all, these square edges. You can adjust the roundness to try and get rid of those. You can always adjust the expansion if need be to expand or to contract the mask. You can also feather the mask, which will actually blur out the edge. Useful in situations like these, where the object is moving very fast and you have lots of motion blur. Just make sure that once you've feathered it, on all the frames, the mask is where it should be. For example, here, I've put the mask on the edge here, which would work normally. However, because I've feathered it now, you can see slight transparent areas on the edge here. So just make sure you clean up your mask after you've done it. And now you've got all of the hard parts out of the way. All you have to do now is just drag in your second clip underneath your first clip. And then you'll notice that as soon as the car goes away, it reveals the second clip. The only thing now is that the composite shot isn't quite long enough to accommodate both clips. So just click on this settings icon here and adjust the duration so that it works better. And there you have a Sam Calder inspired wipe transition. I hope you all enjoyed today's video or at least found it useful. If you did then be sure to hit the like button on this video and share it with people that you also think would find this useful. If you want more content just like this then be sure to subscribe. I will see you in the next video, stay shiny.